Eight years ago, my maidenless teenage self thought it'd be a cool idea to start making music without learning it. I mean, what's the worst that can happen, right? So after that, I watched a few tutorials and tried again. It was a few months later for a video game project in school, and then I ended up making the one that's in the background right now, which this video is actually about, because I ain't touching that one, please, please don't make me. I think that it's good to look back on the progress you made no matter how slow or small it may have been. So that's why I'm going to be remaking my <coughs> first song and see what I can do with it. I mean, what are you gonna do, huh? Comment something like, I ain't believe I ain't that few fuck king liar. How it started? I believe you. Step one was to find the project file from 2016. Step two was, nope, that shit's gone. Step three was accept that I need to level up my pitch recognition skills anyways. Step four, monkey, sad. Monkey, just want happy. To say my pitch, tempo, and rhythm recognition was underdeveloped is understating how much I truly wanted to avoid this. But when it comes to improving your musical skills, it feels illegal to keep avoiding it. Hands in the air now! I have a slightly overripe banana and I'm not afraid to use oh, it. Okay, 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 okay. What do you need? What do you need? Tell me this pitch. Tom. I started to listen uh, to the song and after about an hour, I was able to make out this. From there, before doing any other part of the song, I wanted to expand on this idea first, not for any other particular reason. And to be completely honest, I have no idea what key I'm supposed to be in, uh, nor do I have any idea what's going on. But it's really important to know that I have no idea what's going on with confidence. I changed the way I perceived the key to be in D minor rather than C or Dorian or whatever it was, and then things started to make a little more sense and it was a lot easier to expand my ideas. I wanted to give it a glitchy rapid feel, so I made this rapid hopping progression. I made the melody play extremely tiny staccato notes, added some chromatic notes, and added a gate effect using gross beat. Originally, since it was supposed to be a game track, I wanted to continue to develop it like it was a game track. And uh, I was kinda listening to Undertale a lot for a future video, so it kinda influenced the sound of it. Do you think you can guess which one I was listening to that day? <laughs> I added a sub bass to make it sound fuller, a bass guitar on the left, and a video game-esque bass on the right. It sounded alright, but I wanted to make it more video gamey and make the main melody stand out more. So I put my sound design skills to the test to make a lead instrument. And so made a square wave. I used Harmless after watching two separate tutorials here, making it easier to mess around with it and expect what to hear. I gave it the timbre of a square wave and tweaked it, but I think the most important thing was the portamento and the vibrato that gave it the timbre that I wanted. To complete this and make it feel like an ensemble, I added staccato instruments to every end of the phrase, and it made it sound like a breaking news segment, kind of like how I broke your mom last night. This just in, an Asian man has been found dead after it was discovered that he made a terrible your mom joke. We have John at the scene. John? Yeah, prank him, John. <laughs> you already know. From there, it was adding new segments and interesting loops and phrases. I took this melody from my first song and made it more of a background kind of thing for this next buildup. Because in the original, it's kind of there in your face, uh, extremely loudly. I also heard the halftime melodic part of my original song, so I added it to my current version of that as well. And so to make it extremely climatic as some sort of game battle theme, I thought to make the last part go pretty spicy in terms of melody, but still catchy, at least with my current skill. It included ginormous leaps and quite rapid movement, as well as plenty of chromaticism. Now here's the final comparison.
If you want to hear the song without my horrendous voice, the links are below. And if you want to keep listening to me, then do. <laughs> In fact, I'm just gonna read off the script because I don't have the patience to do 5,000 million takes. After years of reflection, I think the current healthy dosage of comparison is to mainly just look up at your inspirations, because I find it hard to harshly compare myself to someone who I look up to very fondly. Another is to check your past self and your own progress. As for your peers, they can be seen as friendly competition or rivalry. Rivalry? Because I think the focus shouldn't be whether or not you're too hard on yourself, but rather on taking action on the things that you should do. It becomes unhealthy when you try to compare yourself to those who you don't look up to but happen to be way more skilled to you in different ways and then start to feel bitter about it. So to sum it up, I say it's good to be unsatisfied with your skills and yourself, but that should mean you want to get better, not bitter.